So I want you to think back to your childhood, those trips to visit relatives. For me, it was my grandparents in New York in the 1970s. I could still smell the cooking. I could still hear the sound of the clear vinyl seat covers on my grandma's couch <laughs> as I peeled my legs off. <laughs> but what I remember most are the stories my relatives told. I'm sure you can relate. And while we may have heard those stories a thousand times, what we wouldn't give to hear those stories again today. And it was from this that I made it my mission to capture real stories from real people around the globe because I believe we all have the capacity to make optimism contagious just by sharing our life's adventures, our successes, and even our failures. Just look at it this way. Whether people are enduring good times or bad, just knowing others have been in the same boat is comforting. It spreads a message of hope. So for example, meet Lee Silo. Lee was tired of being ridiculed as a young boy for not having a bicycle, nor being able to afford one. His single mother worked hard just to make ends meet. But one day, Lee had a bright idea. He knew he could run home from school every day without taking the bus and build up his strength and his endurance to compete, and he did it. And by senior year, he not only became the track star, he earned the number one title for track in the whole province and put his school on the map for competitive track and field. Pretty cool. Meet Faith Campbell. Faith grew up with fear, violence, and abuse all around her. She knew she had to pull herself out. She knew she had to go back to school and learn a skill, and she did it. She researched schools in the New York City area, and she stumbled across a tuition-free school for underprivileged women funded by the W.R. Grace family years ago. She applied, she got in, and she successfully completed the coursework. Well, Faith is a great name for this person. Why? Because she never lost Faith. Today, she's the head administrator of a nonprofit, she's a motivational speaker, and she's a proud mother, Faith Campbell. Meet Bucky Dent. Bucky is famous for that three-run homer that allowed the Yankees to defeat the Red Sox in the 1978 World Series playoffs. Nice. Well, the Yankees went on that year to defeat the Dodgers, and Bucky earned the series MVP. So Bucky told me that optimism and positive mind control, key factors in his success that year, and still are today in everything he does. He also told me that while sports psychology was relatively unheard of back then, today every professional team has a sports psychologist on staff for the purpose of keeping the players psyched despite their performance. I never knew that, and I think that's very interesting. Meet Caitlin Aronson. Caitlin has severe food allergies. So severe that just being near the wrong morsel of food will absolutely result in a life-threatening situation. Instead of complaining, Caitlin takes the time to educate other children on the importance of a healthy diet. 
She takes the time to educate adults on how to manage the dietary needs of guests and visitors with food allergies, all at 10 years old. Quite impressive. So over the years, I've had the privilege of working with residents in senior living communities around the country. And what I have found is that there is an abundance of wisdom under their roofs. Give it a try someday. Take a walk through a local assisted living or independent living community in your area. It will blow your mind, and they'll appreciate your visit. You know, while we may be a society that focuses on our youth, and we should be, they are our future, we should also appreciate and capture the wisdom of our older generations. Why? Well, they've been through a lot. They know a lot. And they have a lot to share. So for example, meet Diane May. Diane, when she was a little girl, her father would whistle like a mockingbird to call her home for dinner. Today, she's in her mid-90s. And every bird she hears reminds her of her childhood. She even wrote a children's manuscript titled The Perfect Whistle about a mockingbird named Moxwell <laughs> that whistled pleasant songs to soldiers during the war to help remind them of home. Unbelievable. So despite her age, she hopes to get it published someday. And I bet she does. I bet she does. Meet Barbara Woodworth. Barbara tells us about her husband, Bill, of 53 years, and that his optimism is so contagious, it inspires everyone around him. Bill was a child stricken with polio, forced to endure painful treatments and live in and out of hospitals most of his young life. Instead of complaining, he channeled that energy into humor and optimism, which he shared with all the children around him, also stricken with polio. It was said that he added light to their darkest days and helped them to recover as well. Well, today, Bill tells us that humor and optimism are as vital as food and water. And I agree, absolutely. Meet Jim and Rachel Harper. Jim and Rachel lost both their spouses tragically in the 1950s. However, within a few years, they met each other through an amazing set of coincidences and serendipity. They eventually got married and brought all their children together in a Brady Bunch type of way, long before the Brady Bunch was ever heard of. Well, the kids, they hit it off so well that they came up with an unwritten rule which said, we are not step-siblings. We are true brothers and sisters. And 60 years later, today, they still follow that rule, the whole clan. <laughs> And Jim and Rachel, well, they told me they love each other so, so much. And they are thankful to have found true love twice in a lifetime. Cute couple. Really cute couple. Meet David Katz. David survived the Holocaust. He survived the Holocaust on a very simple recipe which I guarantee wasn't so simple at the time. Do what you're told. Never complain. And constantly visualize yourself being freed from the hell. He shared this recipe with everyone around him. For those that listened, they survived and still thank him today. And last, 
Meet Mona Tippins. Mona wanted to be remembered for something unique. A bucket list did not appeal to her. And her award-winning pineapple upside-down cake was not enough. So she decided she wanted to combine her love of train travel with a world record. And she did it. She traveled through 33 countries by rail, never traversing the same place twice. And her mileage was enough to have circled the globe three and one-fifth times. By her 65th birthday, she made it into the Guinness Book and still holds the record today. Just remember this. We all have stories. What you may consider boring or uneventful is actually inspirational and motivational to others around the world. So consider sharing your stories. And remember, we are all naturally mentors just by the sheer impression of our footsteps. Thank you.